AMD fixes the power draw on their GPUs. Reese wants to buy this thing and I want to buy the other thing. Yeah. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, August 1st, 2020. Wild. Are you ready for that? This is a... Uh, this is a moving calendar that we're experiencing right now. We are on our way back from LTX 2023. We had a fantastic time. I was the lucky winner of the silent charity auction of the one and only prototype LTTstore.com metal screwdriver. Listen to this. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. So that, satisfied. That ping so is so lovely. good. I will be putting this to good use and all of the money went to Extra Life, which is supporting local children's hospital in the British Columbia area. So I couldn't have thought of a better place to put my money. Solid. And if you want to put no money, we're giving away a PC courtesy of Micro Center. We've got the 13900K RTX 4090 PC that we're going to be giving away towards at the end of this trip. So we're a little later than that, but we got it signed by a whole bunch of people, including Mr. Linus himself. Linus. <laughs> Linus, Luke, Riley, Jake. We got a bunch of people who signed it uh, and other tech YouTubers as well. It's, he's playing rock, paper, scissors with an imaginary companion back there, but- You what, don't see him? Okay. Oh no, check one, two. Were we muted the entire time? Oh no, I just wonder which audio it's pulling from. <laughs> <laughs> Is the rock, paper, scissors too powerful? Oh no. Could it be the like laptop microphone? It could be the laptop microphones. I'm not changing it now. I am so, so sorry, but a lot of stuff gets broken when we're on the road. And what was broken on AMD's GPUs for the longest time, especially in the 7900 series, was the fact that their idle power consumption was through the roof. But it turns out that we have an idea of how to fix things. We do? Because Computer Base put a whole bunch of GPUs through a whole bunch of power state testing, trying to figure out how do we lower the power draw on these AMD GPUs, especially when you're running multiple monitors, because previously these new 7000 series GPUs would draw over 120 plus watts on idle if they're hooked up to more than one monitor. Which doesn't make sense. That's way too much, but they found out that if you turn on variable refresh rate, it drops the power usage from over 100 watts down to 24 watts. Why? It's AMD does not to do drivers, man. That, I, <laughs> I can't explain it any better way than that. <laughs> it's something all right. It sure is. But if you want to talk about some significant low power stuff, that you might like. Let's talk about today's video sponsor. Well, there's been a little uproar around Intel's NUCs lately. Don't worry, because Geek NUC has you covered. They have the NUC 12 Enthusiast Serpent Canyon NUC, which is a mighty small PC. It's got a 14 core i7 12700H, an Intel Arc A770M GPU, which is configurable with various amounts of RAM and storage, all in a crazy two and a half liter case with an incredible amount of IO, including Thunderbolt 4, DisplayPort, and even HDMI 2.1 ports. And they have it for an incredible price. The bare bone kit is cheaper than anywhere you can find it, or you can get it with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD for less than otherwise, and 64 gigs of RAM with the two terabyte SSDs, $500 cheaper than other retail stores. And in their summer sale right now, Geek Nuck is providing you with the lowest price on Intel Nuck products in their whole network of the United States. As an Intel partner and Titanium member, Geek Nuck guarantees that all Nucks are brand new and authentic with a three year warranty service and a no reason return or exchange service within 30 days. And you can check out our link to the NUC12 Enthusiast Serpent Canyon down below and enter my exclusive code to get an extra discount of $50. So go ahead and check it out. And on top of the Enthusiast Serpent Canyon, the Geek NUC has summer sale promotion going on all summer long until August 28th. So go ahead and check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to Geek NUC for sponsoring today's video. And then we also, it just seems like the world is getting into low powered stuff. You got the Geek NUCs happening and now you have Lenovo Legion go allegedly in the works according to some reports that because of the success of the asus rog ally lenovo wants to get into this handheld game and so there's actually no pictures of the lenovo go this is like a preview of a different one we also don't know the specs allegedly it's going to be the z1 extreme but according to reports and behind the scenes information a lot of these companies were waiting to see how the ally did before they were going to jump in on the z1 extreme train but i don't necessarily trust a whole lot of these manufacturers to make not a good all one. of them yeah i mean especially because the biggest problem with the ally is not who made it it's Windows. You're so just not going to solve that problem. So unless Lenovo is actually going to have an official partnership with Valve to bring SteamOS to a more powerful device, I don't necessarily see 
a reason to go for one over the other. Like, obviously, we'll have to wait and see specs, but I'm not interested in more people getting into the handheld space right now. It's just a matter of flavors at this point if they start making more of them. No, we all like the same flavor. Ah. We like orange raspberry. I'll take it. Yeah, that's what I thought. I've never had orange raspberry. Me neither. Well, <laughs> you know what I have had? You. Deals. And with that, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out in the internet car version. Woo! And starting off today, we have the Thermalrite Frozen Magic 280 Scenic V2 AIO Liquid CPU Cooler, going for only $52.42, making it $22.47 off. Oh, all right, Reese, I got it. This looks like a knockoff something. Is this real? Yeah, I like you it. You sure? Yeah. You've been getting on a knockoff deal, so like, yeah. you know that? Yeah. But then switching from thermal right to thermal take, we have the S100 Micro ATX Mini Tower Black Tempered Gloss. How do you call a Micro ATX a Mini Tower? Shh. That's you what gotta they... call it a Micro Tower. That, what the that, heck? No one calls it a Micro Tower. I don't get in this world, man. The Tempered Gloss Black Edition is currently going for only $39.99 after a $10 rebate, making it $30 off. And then lastly, Solodime. we have the Solodime P41 Plus Gen 4 NVMe SSD going for two terabytes for only $69.99. Nice. Nice. Making that $30 off. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm Andrew, back to this guy for the rest of your hotness. Well, I'm going to hand it right back to Reese because I want to talk about this new keyboard that oh, I want to talk about it too. The 8 bit Do keyboard. Now, I initially was like, I'm not, I'm not, this is just another like custom unique keyboard. There's a ton of players in this space, but I also was really against it because of the Nintendo tie in to it, which didn't make me happy. But then I saw that it has three and a half millimeter ports with the super button mm -hmm. so that you can have like a gigantic macro pad right here. They have can, their own, but you can go like completely custom with and that. And you can turn it into like an adaptive controller with this as well. It actually seems really cool. I love the color scheme. Mm -hmm. They have two different versions. You want to tell me I about I want the those? Famicom version because we grew up with the Famicom in South Africa. They're more uh, NES kind of guys. Yeah, they have the Fami edition and the N edition. So what does it stand for? Who, who knows? N none of your business. And also the price tag's not bad. It's a yeah. hundred bucks. hundred dollars for honestly a good looking keyboard, but like the modularity just seems really cool. And speaking of 8-Bit Do, when we had the uh, LTT studio tour, the LMG studio tour at LTX, one of the things that they showed us with their teleprompters is they use those really mini 8-Bit Do mm -hmm. controllers. The tiny the boys, teleprompters, yeah. And that's that's all they use. Yeah. Cause they're, they don't break more than a regular controller and they're super cheap to replace. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately what's not cheap to replace is human lives and this is actually a story that i don't typically discuss here on hot news but i did want to toss it out for audience reaction because there's a couple things in this story that have me a little bit intrigued so if you are going to discuss it please do it respectfully especially considering the fact that there is loss of life here but the uber driver who was behind the first deadly self-driving accident has actually pled guilty and been charged and has been sentenced to three years of probation. Now, a lot of this does seem to be like the Uber driver who was supposed to be monitoring the full self-driving system is at fault because instead of paying attention, according to the reports, they were watching the voice yeah. instead of actually watching out for anybody who would be on the road. However, according to court documents, the Uber car recognized the person pushing the bicycle across the street 5.6 seconds before impact and then did nothing. And then the court determined that Uber couldn't be held criminally liable, which is really intriguing that the driver who was supposed to be monitoring couldn't be held liable, but then the people or the company that designed the system for it isn't held liable. And that was the part where I was like, this seems to be a little bit of a double standard and I'm not sure if I'm necessarily in favor of Uber not also being criminally charged for this issue, especially if there was a bug in it. Obviously they tried their best to put a human driver in control of the situation, but then also at the same time, you have other fail safes in different self-driving technology, like on Ford with the Blue Cruise, they have their eye tracking to make sure that the person is paying attention to the road. Did Uber have any of those fail safes in place? It's a question that I want to toss to you. Do you think Uber should have been held responsible for this? Do you think the charges brought against the driver who wasn't paying attention is enough? I want to hear from you down below in the comments. Again, keep it civil, trying to add a little bit more social stories into hot news and want to see how it goes. That this is this is up to you. But now switching gears entirely, uh, we're going to talk about PlayStation 5 getting a nice software update where you can now have eight terabytes of SSD if you have the beta which program, which solid. I've wanted that for so long, especially since you only get like 600 gigabytes right now. Freaking 
Sony 825 or whatever, and that's like 690. Yeah, that's not a great time. So larger capacity SSD, you also have Dolby Atmos enabled audio devices and a few other things, including accessibility features. Pretty decent software update. I just, I like to put SSDs in things. And so seeing eight terabytes gets my heart happy. Oh, you're gonna do it? No, <laughs> I delete my games when I'm done. Yeah, I, I'm I not don't, a I don't need, order. I don't need it. Internet's fast enough. Oh, flexing that American mm. internet, bro. And you know what I also like to buy? A things, AMD stuff. People think stuff. I'm an NVIDIA shell, but I'm, I'm an AMD through and through, especially when we get reports like this on their upcoming APUs, especially the Strix Halo APU that's supposed to be coming out. Because we're now getting reports from behind the scenes that the Strix Halo is gonna be similar to a desktop CPU and that it's going to have not the Zen 5C cores, the little compact ones, but full-fledged fat 16-core desktop chips. I'm down it. for this. And then it's gonna have incredible graphics added onto it. So it looks like a desktop Zen 5 with all of the APU goodness that you could possibly want. Going all the way up to 120 watts of power, you slap this thing into a desktop machine, <laughs> you can really build like mini ITX systems that could actually play so much they could do so much content creation with those 16 cores i i very much value when there, we used to do videos a while back where i had a mini itx system where i had uh i didn't need a discrete gpu because i had the 4750g but then i used that pci express slot that typically is reserved for those like seven to ten liter cases yeah you know you usually put a graphics card in that I put a capture card so that I can use it for more production work. Mm. You can open up the options, what you can use your PC for. I love APUs very, very much. Zach's zoning out in the back. Reese is still here. And we're done with hot news. We'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends. It's still in the car. We got We got a couple episodes coming. We got a long way to go home, man. Oh, <laughs> doggy.